Hi, I'm Nancy Newhard with Allegheny Highlands Arts and Crafts Center, and we are delighted to be here for the Allegheny County Bicentennial Year with uh, the work of two local artists at the Allegheny Highlands Arts and Crafts Center. The first one we'll talk about today was an artist whose name was Loretta Redmond Benham, and we are here with her daughter, Jean, Jeannie, sorry, <laughs> Jeannie Redmond Benham. Benham. Ledford. Ledford. Yeah. <laughs> Getting all those names in is fun. Yeah. But we're going to talk about a little bit about Loretta and some of her works. We have the fortune, good fortune to have a picture of the young Loretta, and Loretta just before she passed away in 2015. So that's also a part of the exhibit. Jeannie, welcome. Thank you so much for your help and Ken's help in pulling all of this together. Thank you for doing it. You've done an amazing job. Well, it was a lot of fun. Thanks to Jeannie and Ken, we have an example of several different styles of Loretta's work from different periods. What, how did we find these? Where did uh, these come from? She had them stashed everywhere. Um, it, Mom walked by a piece of paper, oh, and she started drawing. So, I mean, you know, we finally put them all in one room, but we're still going through drawers, finding things <laughs> where she's drawn on something, you know, whether it's a piece of paper, a napkin, you know, the back of a placemat. Um, it's just the house is just full of little pieces. That's wonderful. Uh, where she just. How'd she get started? She was always artistically inclined, um, the whole family were, uh, but she would, I guess she did it for her quiet time um, okay. and everything and she got started uh, really young and then of course she got married and had kids so she put it on the back burner um, until, oh, I guess I want to say ooh, 35 years ago um, and she decided that she had put off her art long enough. So um, she decided she was going to start painting and drawing again. She started out just drawing and then she got into watercolors because she really liked watercolors. Um, when she was young she had started in oil but she liked the, she liked the freedom of watercolors and the, as she called them the happy accidents. Um, so uh, she started in the watercolor and then of course she came to the art center and she met so many amazing ladies who painted and and some of the gentlemen too and she started taking classes and she would exp and she expanded from there and so she got to acrylics she liked acrylics because they dried fast but <laughs> then she fell back into oil because she said there was just some things you could do with oil you couldn't do with anything else exactly exactly one of the things I like best about Loretta is that she tried everything, not just media-wise, but subject-wise. You know, the watercolors tend to be uh, florals and outdoor scenes and indoor scenes, but her acrylics and her pastels and a couple of watercolors are everything. Yeah. The, so hey, whatever, tell me about just, these. Whatever just happened to catch her fancy, she would, she'd be sitting there one day and think, oh, I'm in the mood for an outdoor scene. So she would go up and she would sketch something and she would lay it out and she would work on it fiendishly, you know, for days at a time and, and everything. And then she would have to walk away from it because she was famous for over painting, I guess is what you would say. <laughs> you know, she just would keep yep. picking at it and picking at it. But, um, and yet they look so fresh yeah. and so unstudied. It, it, I, always, I was always amazed because I would think, you know, she said, what do I need to do? Leave it alone, Mom. You know, you need to leave it alone, Mom. It's fine the way, no, nah, I'm not quite sure. And Mom, leave it alone. <laughs> but um, she would it just, just, she'd be watching something on TV and say, ooh. Or she'd be leafing through a magazine, ooh. You know, so it was just anything and everything was fodder for her art. It didn't make any difference. You, you, people could be talking. And, and something they would say, and she would go, ooh. You know, and she'd and, pick and, up a napkin and, and, and draw on the back yeah, of it. And she would pick up a napkin and start drawing. I've seen her do that. Yeah. One of the other things I think that I thought so highly of Loretta's work for were her characters and her faces. Because whether I knew them or not, when I saw her work, I knew it. And so these three good old boys sitting on the front, 
porch of a general store somewhere and this wonderfully ornate gold frame just tickles me no end. Can you tell me anything about who these fellas are? Well, when she started out, she wanted to do something. She said it reminded her of her when she was kids. Well, um, there used to be an old store and the gentleman would get out front and they would have their chatter and everything. She said it was hilarious. She said because you could walk, woman could walk by and they would go silent. They, you know, whatever they were talking about, women <laughs> couldn't hear it. But she wanted to capture that because that was a really strong memory when she was a kid. And so she decided, she pulled this pretty much out of her head and, and put it in there. Um, she, you know, had a couple of pictures she went by for like the shadows and things. She wanted to get those just right. But her people, she said, her people frustrated her to death because she said mm-hmm. it didn't make any difference who she painted. They always wound up looking like somebody she knew. Well, that's why they're so wonderful. Because uh, they look like somebody I know. Uh, yeah. And I've had two different people tell me where this store is. And they were both different choices of where the store yeah, was. Yeah, it's amazing because so, actually the store is not anywhere. It's just something she pulled out of her head. But people can look at it and say, oh, I know this place. Oh, I know that person. And it's like, uh, okay, you know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it was amazing. We're here with the work of Joanne Taylor, who is originally a Covington, Virginia native, um, who moved to Conway, South Carolina, or easily South Carolina, and is still painting. And we're here to talk about some of her pieces. Joanne Taylor began as a watercolor artist and has tried many different techniques and many different styles of work. We have an example of a lot of those here. The first ones I want to talk about are probably some of her most abstract and for me as a working artist some of the most exciting. Uh, The pieces along the wall here are primarily acrylic. In some cases they're acrylic with encaustic which means that they have a little bit of wax mixed in with them and they range from the very abstract deliberations with just pure gorgeous makes me want to roll in it color to something that's a little more traditional and defined in the autumn piece over here. Joanne Taylor grew up in Allegheny County and attended Covington High School. Her art teacher there was a woman by the name of Elizabeth Smith who was a Clifton Forge artist that many people will remember and who apparently was an exceptionally fine teacher as well as a fine artist. Uh, Somewhere along the line she worked with Joanne to do drawings for the Cougar yearbook in 1951 and 52 and those of you who went to Covington High School at that point in time can go back and look at those drawings and recognize some of Joanne's work perhaps. Then Joanne fell in love with watercolor and she also went to Mountain Gateway Community College, which of course at that time was Dabney S. Lancaster Community College, where she worked with Barry Ballou and learned to do woodcuts. And then jo, as Joanne went on to Mary Washington and other places, she learned to do watercolor and absolutely fell in love with the medium. When you visit the show, you'll notice that there are many different styles even within her watercolor paintings from the somewhat abstracted to the very detailed small sketch-like pieces. But one of my absolute favorites is a piece she calls Never Too Old. And it appears to be trees from an old orchard. You can see that the trunks have thickened and twisted and yet they're still producing blooms and have just this absolutely stunning beauty. And I I look at the title and it kind of gives me cold chills because I think, is she reminding us that beauty has no age? Is she reminding us that you're never too old to learn something new? Is she reminding us that you're never too old to try new adventures and new styles as she seems to to have done throughout her painting life? There are 40 pieces in this exhibit, so there's something that will suit everyone's taste. And although Joanne now lives in South Carolina, you can see from this piece called Purple Mountain Majesties that she's never quite lost her love for the landscape 
in the Allegheny Highlands. The colors are rich and deep and beautiful, and there's a particularly nice passage across the foreground where the blues and the reds just sort of ease into one another.